Happy Sabbath. It's an honor to be here with you guys. It's an honor to still have freedom in this country and worship. I think we take it for granted often. And um, it's just a blessing to be here. Beautiful weather, as the guy's been saying. I'm originally from L.A., but I've been in Texas, which I now call home. And this is just gorgeous weather. Gorgeous, gorgeous. You guys are spoiled. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now, the cost of living is a little high, but that's a different story. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Well, we got in on Thursday night. Um, we spent some time yesterday in San Francisco and got to do a little sightseeing. Two more, we leave at six in the morning. So um, we're not going to sleep. We're going to stay up all night and just make friends and families. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray before we get into the message. I know we've prayed, but there's nothing wrong with talking to God again. Amen? Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty Father, we just thank you once again, Father, for this beautiful Sabbath. We, we know that your presence is here, Father. This moment, Lord, I want to just ask you that your angels continue protecting us, that your Holy Spirit dwell here, Father, that any evil spirit that is here, that in the name of Jesus, gets cast away, Father. That the words that I speak, Lord, not be my words, that it be your words, Father. That even I myself might be convicted and realize that your Son is soon to come, and we must surrender completely to you, Father. Father, help us be strong in Jesus. Help our faith. Give us wisdom, and above all, Father, empty us and fill us up with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We ask you this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning we went to Sabbath class with the youth, and it was, it was a good topic. We were talking about things that we value, such as material things, phones, computer, work, relationships, and how these things at one point will have an ending but what God promises is forever. And um, it was interesting because as the class was going on, and I, I don't know your name. I keep on forgetting your name. Moses. Oh, powerful name, Moses. As Moses was sharing the class, I was just thinking about um, my sermon this morning. It's titled Brainwashed. And the reason I call it Brainwashed because we were talking about people who turn to drugs primarily. We were, we were talking, that was one of the topics, how they feel alone, they feel... They need peace in their life. Whatever the reasons might be, but usually people turn for it to feel complete. And many times they'll turn to drugs, and drugs will give them that peace or that, that fulfillment for that time being. But when they're done again, they feel worse than what they did at first. And, and we start seeing that people would do harder drugs to, to just feel complete. And many times we see somebody who's a drug addict, and it's easy to point fingers. But in our lives, we have to realize that we do the same things with different things in our life. Some of it could be music. For us, it was music. For those who were here last night, Vivaldo shared a little bit about our testimony. And just to touch on that, for those who weren't here last night, he talked about we were all raised in the church, but we left the church and we got into the music industry. Carlos got a record deal. Um, we were working in the, in the industry. He was touring around the United States, song on the radio, and we felt like that was going to complete us. But being in that dark industry, we realized that it was not completing us. And in one week, the Holy Spirit spoke to all of us. And in one week, we left the industry which is not easy to do when there's contracts involved, when there's money involved, and when there's, um, as we've all talked, there's a lot of drug money involved. You can't just walk away from that industry. But our God is much more greater. Our God is much more powerful. And I do feel that Jesus is coming so soon. And even if he doesn't come in my generation, as V said, I might feel he is, but even if he doesn't, my days are numbered. This could be the last sermon I ever preach. And I think it's important that each of us, whenever we encounter someone that we love, that we truly want to see in heaven, each time we speak to them, we should treat them like it's the last time we're going to see them. What impression are we going to leave? What message are we going to leave with them? It's very important. We see that at one point we were as human beings created perfect. Not just in, in, our, in our image, physically, we were perfect. Tall, beautiful, no scars. We were wise. Knowledge. A perfect world that we can't even understand. We see things in this earth that are beautiful, beautiful weather, beautiful hills. And even in that, even in perfection, we see a bit of perfection. Even though years ago, sin has entered in this world and we could still see the beauty of God. But we have Adam and Eve who were perfect. Perfect in everything because Jesus himself, he spoke the words in creation and creating different things, but with Adam himself, he, he, he digged his hands and he molded man. Beautiful. I like to share with people when we talk, when Adam opened up his eyes, the eyes that he saw were Jesus. 
You see, because Jesus gave him that breath of life. And how did he give him that breath of life? What did he do? So basically, when Adam opened his eyes, Jesus was just backing up. He saw his creator face to face. Such a beautiful thing. See, God could have said, let there be man, and we would have been. He said, no, for this, I'm going to get my hands dirty. For this, I'm going to put some work. And I always like to say that the same words that spoke the stars into existence, the, the same words that spoke life into existence, we have here. And how we take for granted these powerful words. Created perfect. And as we read it's Genesis 3, the serpent, who was a serpent? Satan. He approaches Eve and he brainwashes her. He tells her, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you could be just like God. You see, God just doesn't want you to, to be like him. He's, he's, he's hating, as the youth would say. Yo, come on. Just, just, it's, a, it's a beautiful fruit. She was brainwashed. The Spirit of Prophecy tells us that when the serpent spoke to Eve, he sang to her. He spoke to her in a melodic voice. The power of music. See, he didn't come to her in an ugly animal. Tells us the serpent could even fly. It was able to walk. Different colors. Today we're like, ooh, snakes. But at that moment, it was just a beautiful creature that God had created. And he sings to Eve and he says, you could be just like God. He flatters her. So many of us turn to music. So many of us turn to the media. The power in it. It's a science. And this afternoon, I invite all of you guys, please, at 5.30, we will talk about the power of it. But how important music plays a huge role in the fall of sin and the end of days because when the skies open up, we will hear music again. Amen? The most perfect music. It's like our whole life is a soundtrack. But it's not just music. It's not just drugs. We, we see that she was brainwashed to believe that she could be just like God. She was brainwashed to believe, I'm not really going to sin. And, and ladies, check this out. This is a love story that ladies love, but it's really not that loving. Adam's fault was that he loved Eve more than God. See, he knew what he was about to do was wrong. He knew it. But he loved her so much that he was willing to die with her than to live without her. And as, aw, as beautiful that might sound, Jesus did the same thing for us. He says, I'm willing to die for them than to live the rest of my life without them. And he did. He ate. And he himself, they were both brainwashed to believing the lie that was given to them. I was looking up in the dictionary, different definitions for brainwashed. One of them, which I thought was interesting, it says, um, the indoctrination resulting in the rejection of old beliefs and accepting of new ones. You see, I wasn't pathfinders. I was in church my whole life. I used to come here, the pastor preach. I thought I was boring. I thought hymns were boring because it just, it wasn't me. I just didn't care about it. But during the week, my time was being spent when my mother wasn't looking at on TV, music that I was able to hear outside of my home because it wasn't allowed in my home. Or when she wasn't home, these things I started hearing and it was just, it just tasted better. It just looked better. It just felt better. See, what Satan was starting to do, the same thing he did with Eve, he was brainwashing me. Today, we look at TV, and TV tells us, Simpsons is a perfect example, that the father is, is dumb. The kids are smarter than the father. And the mother is slightly smarter than the kids, but not really. God has called men for us to be the priests in our home. But the media is telling us something different, to the point that if there is a father, all right, people are blessed enough to have a father in the home, which I didn't have one. They think it's okay to come home, watch sports, drink beer all day. The mom handles everything. The kids are smarter than them. When we have been called to be priests in our homes, we have been called to be the head of our homes, but we've been brainwashed and believing that, hey, we just pay the bills. And that's, that's a good side of it. Then you got others who say, I'm just not going to be in my, my kid's life. My mom had me at 15. My father wasn't in my life. He himself was brainwashed. We have been brainwashed and believing that, you know, sex sells, so women have to go out there and look a certain way in order to get a husband. Now realizing that at the end of the day, a woman should give herself some respect. A woman should be so lost up in Christ that a man first has to go through Jesus before he could get to her. See, I work in the medical industry, and I understand that drug reps have to, they don't have to, they choose to dress a certain way to get to the doctor's. But to be honest with you, the ones that I've seen actually succeed have been those who have actually come in, attractive women, they dress perfectly nice, they're not showing things, they're, 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 they're smart. Those are the ones that I see a long future in. 
The ones that come in and try to show, the doctors have no respect for them. They might get in here, they might get in there, but that's it. Or women go to the club and they think it's okay, and they're dancing to a song that is degrading women, it's degrading women, and they're dancing to it, and, and you don't call me that name, but yeah, they'll dance to a song that is calling them that name. They go have a one-night stand, but they feel mandatory to take a shower afterwards because they feel dirty. We have been brainwashed to believe that this is going to complete us. See, for me, it was music. For me, as I know, music. I love music. I'll give time to music. I'll give my love to music. I'll give everything to music. I was giving my life to music, and just when I thought I was complete, the next day I was like, I'm just not there yet. I got to get something. It's just not for, It's getting me to that high point, but I'm not complete. For 6,000 years and plus, we have been brainwashed. Brainwashed and believing that men are not running the household. Brainwashed and believing that our kids should be smarter than us. And sadly to say, it has become that way. Brainwashed and believing that it's okay to be a player for guys. You can have multiple girlfriends. It's okay. It's cool. We give props to that. Even in our own churches, we give props to people to do so because the media, because society, because we have been brainwashed and believing that the good is bad and the bad is good. It's really sad that many of us have had issues in our homes, Christian homes, where some of our parents come up and preach and sing, and they do so much, but in our home we have been degraded by our own parents. Christians being in homes where they've been molested, they've been abused. And then we ask ourselves why the youth is where they're at today. Really? Because there's no leaders. Because there's no men of God, because there's no women of God. So what happens is we are becoming brainwashed and asking ourselves, why is society so bad? Let's stop pointing fingers to these celebrities. They're only there because of us. They say 80% of Americans are Christians. And I said, if 80% of Americans are Christian, how can we allow such garbage on TV? How can Desperate Housewives be on TV? How can we find it okay to watch the Kardashians? How can we be okay to laugh at sin, the same sin that put Jesus on the cross? You see, in us... Seriously, in us, there is nothing, nothing whatsoever that we find attractive in God. See, when I used to go to the clubs because I was trying to network, I was saying, God, please let me get this record deal, because I knew it had nothing to do with God. I said, right, you stay over there, I'm going to go in here. This is lights, this is camera, here are women, there's alcohol. This is life, you are a little boring for me. See, we never really tell them that, but we find God unattractive. There's nothing attractive about God. We come to church and we have these hymns, we have the sermons, and we're like, it's 12, I'm hungry, can we leave? But we can sit in a movie theater, three hours, four hours, sometimes all day in our homes, watching movies, but the Word of God, there's nothing attractive to it. And you know why? Because God doesn't come with lights, camera, and action. He comes real. You see, the 30-second clips we get in, 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 um, in the TV for, for a movie, it gives us everything. I mean, you watch it and your heart's pumping. You're like, I got to watch this. But God doesn't come to us that way. See, when Satan went up to the angels in heaven, he was talking to them. He was lying to them. But do you understand that the angels in heaven didn't know what sin was? They didn't understand what a lie was. They didn't know what it was. Like, yo, are you lying to me? Are you trying to steal my money? They didn't understand that because it was perfect. And God couldn't use the same techniques that Satan was using because Satan was using lies. God's like, I just, I'm just a real God. I keep it real. Now, as youth, we're like, yeah, just keep it real, man. Keep it real. But in reality, everybody who's influencing us is not keeping it real. There's nothing in God that we find attractive. So how do we escape this curse? How do we escape this curse? Romans 8, 7 tells us, if you guys could please go to Romans chapter 8, verse 7. As Romans chapter 8, verse 7, when you're there, please say amen. I, I got my new kings here, but I'm reading from a different version. I thought it was powerful. Romans 8, 7, and it says the following. It says, our desires, listen carefully, our desires fight against God because they do not and cannot obey God's law. There is nothing in the human being that wants God. Nothing whatsoever. You know, many of us could dress like a Christian. Many of us could eat like a Christian. Many of us could pretend and like Christian music. 
But in reality, deep inside, we are still desiring the world. You understand that I've been doing ministry for three years, and I was in the world for 10 years. Prior to that, it was just what my mama taught me. But now as an adult, a, a, a relationship with either good or evil, I have been in the world way longer than I've been in the Word of God. So naturally, when someone passes by with a certain music, it still causes my attention. But when and where am I going to get to the point where I just can't stand that? Where I start to hate sin and not love it? You know, my grandmother, um, she, in Puerto Rico, they listen to reggaeton. This is very popular music. I'm sure some of you guys have heard it. It's a style of hip-hop and reggae. I guess you could call it mixed together. Now, when I hear reggaeton, it makes me want to move a little bit, okay? Guilty. Y'all got to pray for me. It catches my attention. My, my, my spirit says no. My flesh says yes. Now, my grandmother hears these things like, ¿Qué es eso? Es She's like, what is that? It's trash. She doesn't hear nothing but noise. You ever notice that parents usually like, what are you listening to? That music is horrible. What is that? The kid's like, mom, this is Lil Wayne. This is really tight. What are you talking about? Because our parents have their taste buds. They have been brainwashed in a different time. You hear your parents' music, and you're like, wow, that is boring. <laughs> what is this? Really, mom? Like, this is it? This is not cool. But we think that our, right? We've been brainwashed. Everybody has brainwashed in one way or another. And I do talk about music primarily because that's my testimony. And I feel that music is everywhere. It's in the elevators, in your cars, in your iPod, it's in the commercials. I don't care if you say I don't listen to no music. You still listen to music when you go do your grocery shopping. Which, by the way, I can't believe your Walmart doesn't sell bread or fruits. I don't know if you guys know about that, but I was in shock. You guys know what I'm talking about? We went to Walmart here to buy some shirts and some things. And we got cereal and we're looking for the milk. And I go to the lady and said, where's, where, where's the milk at? She says, we don't have milk. I said, okay, where's your fruit at? She's like, we don't have no fruit or bread. And I'm like, what? She's like, we got, we got grocery stores. I'm like, well, Texas has got big old H-E-Bs and Walmart. That's it. One-stop shop. We have been brainwashed, and everywhere we go, we are being given a doctrine that we either believe or don't believe. We could dress like a Christian. We can act like a Christian. But ask yourself, do you truly love the Sabbath? Or do you feel like, I got to go, it's the seventh day, so it's in the Bible, so I kind of have to go. Plus, if I don't go, brothers and sisters are going to come visit me next Sabbath, and I really don't want them to come to my house, so I'm just going to go to church. <laughs> I am just, just going to go. I'm going to pop in the CD just because, you know, it's what I'm supposed to do. But when are we getting to the point that we're doing it because we love it? You know, there's this guy, my, my um, aunt's ex-husband, his name was Jose, and his car was beat up raggedy. I mean, it wasn't even painted. It was like this color of like you sand it down and you just leave it stand down. Like it was an ugly car. But he was a mechanic and he knew how to build transmissions and he knew how to take care of his car. And this car ran real good. See, from the outside, it was just junk. But my car that looked better had a Nissan Sentra 98. I thought it was broke down all the time. His car ran. The outside mine looked better, but the inside was bad. And it made me realize that the Christian experience cannot start from without. It has to begin within. Because if I try to put a tie on, at the end of the day, I'm still a sinner. If I try to stop listening to this music, which is good, do the best you can, but there's nothing that you can do. You know, we get it confused as Christians. We believe that the gospel is about what we give up. It has nothing to do about what you give up. It's what's been given up for you. You understand what I'm saying? It is important to eat right. It is important to keep the Sabbath, but many of us are doing it for the wrong reasons. We're doing it because we feel like we have to. When Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, first was loving him, then keeping his commandments. He doesn't say, keep my commandments, and then you love me. We first have to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the only reason why I keep his commandments is because I love him, but I don't love him because in reality, I love sin. And until we truly understand that what sin is trying to do is destroy us. It's trying to kill us. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. My question today is, are you living to die or are you dying to live? See, from the moment that you take your first breath <gasps> as a little newborn, you begin to die. You're not living. You're dying. And we go to the clubs and we wild out. It's not just for the youth. 
Some adults should go to church, but in their, in their homes, they're living a lifestyle that it is unchristlike. They don't know how to treat their wives. Wives don't know how to treat their husbands. Lights are off. We have adults addicted to pornography in our churches. It's not just the youth. It's everywhere. It's everybody. Sin does not attack a certain age. Sin attacks us all. And we have to realize, wait a minute, so am I living to die? Is this it right here, this life? I mean, should I just wall out and do the best that I can because this is it? Or should I be born again? Should I say, you know what, Jesus, I need to die. You said I need to die in order to truly live. Today we have the freedom to come to church and worship. Amen. 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 But there will be a time sooner than most of us think that you won't have that freedom. You will not have the freedom to come here and worship. And some of us come to church and I've been guilty. And I just open my mouth and I'm just running words and melody. Am I truly understanding that I have a direct connection through Jesus himself to the throne? Do you understand that if I knew Obama or if I knew Bush or if I knew the mayor of this city or if I knew the judge of the city, better yet, I knew the judge here and I get pulled over and I get a ticket, I'm really not going to care. I'll call, hey, yo, judge, yeah, it's me, Jimmy, you know, your homeboy. Can you do me a favor? Yo, I got a ticket, just take it off because I have a relationship. We think it's so cool because so-and-so knows Usher or so-and-so knows the president or so-and-so knows. Listen carefully. People of God, you guys have a direct connection to the throne, to the creator of heavens and of earth. But we've been so brainwashed to say, no, we don't. We really don't. We say our prayers and it sounds the same every time. We point at other religions that they have, they have traditions and we do the same exact thing. You know, it's not about the religion. It's about the relationship with Jesus Christ. But deep within, it needs to begin. In three years that I've been with the ministry, we all struggle. And I used to fall on certain things. I'm like, God, why do I keep on falling? <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm praying, I'm studying, why? And I would try, and I would try, and I would try until finally it hit me. I'm trying. He says, let me take over. Okay, you take over. I might, I might do it again tomorrow. You take over. And as I started digging myself and studying the word of God, as I started spending more time contemplating on the plan of redemption, I turned back and I realized, wait a minute. I remember that I used to. Transformation has begun. Am I perfect? Far from it. But what he has started in me and in every single one of you, he will finish. But you must first say, I'm dying to live. We have to die to live. We must be born again. We must have a new heart, a new purpose, new taste buds. The things that we used to look at and we found attractive, we need to say, I, I just hate that. It just, it's, it's ugly. The eyes that just turn around, man, and we just like to look and lust, we have to say, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to do that. That put Jesus on the cross. Everything about us, everything about Jimmy Estrada needs to die. And Jesus Christ needs to live. Do you guys understand that every single day, day in, day out, heavenly angels come to earth to protect you. There are swords pulled out. There are shields lifted up. While unfallen angels, they're not just trying to kill you. They're trying to torture you. Think of the person you love the most. It could be your little one. It could be your wife. It could be your mom, your best friend. Whoever it is, think of the person you love the most. You understand that Satan hates that person? Hates them. Hates them. I got a three-year-old. And I have to understand that in my home, I struggle every day. But I'm going to hold on to Jesus. So he comes to the Father. And if he can't do the fight, he's just going to go to the wife. And if he can't, who does he go to next? The little one. I have to say, God, I've been brainwashed by all the movies I've watched, by all the music I've listened, by all the gossip I've been involved in. I need you to wash my brain. 
I need you to cleanse with it. Someone said in the class, you know, our, our mind, Satan knows that our mind is the only connection we have to Jesus. It's the only way the Father communicates to us. And he wants to do everything possible to spiritually murder us before killing us. During the dark ages, when people decided to stand up and preach, and even before that, the apostles were preaching the word of God. And as they preached, preached the word of God, they said, it's uneasy, kill them! And they would kill them. And they would realize that each time one person would die, 10, 20, 30 people would rise. Each time you killed one, more would rise. Each time you killed one, more would rise. And hold on, Satan said, I got a better plan. How about we compromise and spiritually we make them dead? Dark ages. Spiritually, we have no access to the word of God. Many years of whatever man told us, we believed it. For many years. And there was a few people, God has always had his people, always, that as time reveals and as history starts showing, we start seeing a group of peoples in the mountains. We ain't the first to keep the Sabbath. We start realizing, wait a minute, wait a minute, we're not the only ones to talk about the mark of the beast. This has been around for a while. But for the dark ages times, majority of the people did not have access to what we have now. And then there was a Protestant movement. They started protesting. And the movement, the Lutherans and the Baptists, and so on, things started falling in its place. The Sanctuary was a whole different ser um, sermon. Till finally in the 1800s, we accept, as we know now, that how we don't baptize as just little kids. We believe in the immersion baptismal. We believe in going straight to Jesus and not just to a man. We believe in the Ten Commandments. We believe in faith and obedience. Amen? Amen. Amen. Satan says, I, I, I can't kill them yet, because if I start killing them, then more will rise. So he said, I know what I'll do. I'll start brainwashing them. They have access to the word of God. They have access to the library. Matter of fact, they have access to the internet, which could be for good or evil. You could do anything in the internet. It's there. Parents, our kids are wiser than us. Not wiser. Our kids are smarter than us at times because of the information that is presented to them that we ourselves didn't have. At our there was a time that my mother could tell me when I was your age. Now we can't do that. You can't tell your kids when I was your age. Kids could teach us a lot. It's a new generation. A new generation. But Satan says, I, I got to brainwash them. I got to make sure that besides going to work, when they get off of work, instead of studying the word of God, I have to make sure they go and start watching a TV show. They, they, forget that. They, they got to watch a TV. They got to listen to the music. They got to have so much time doing absolutely nothing that they don't have time for the word of God. And then when we do try to say the word of God, it is so boring to us because our taste buds have been adapted to all the junk that we have been seeing. And then we ask ourselves, why can I not change? Because you can't change. Jesus got to change you. I don't care how many times you come to church. I don't care if you eat meat or if you don't eat meat. I don't care about none of that. If your relationship with Christ is not where it needs to be, all of this is pointless. Because Jesus said, if you love me. If you don't, why are you even doing it? And he said, but why, why am I going to love you? Because I loved you first. Because one day I sat on a throne, and one day I had a crown, and I looked at my father and said, I'm going to go down there for them. And my father said, you're my only son. And they talked about it, and they said, it's going to happen. And I took off my throne. I got off my throne. I took off my crown. I took off my robe, and I came as a baby. I didn't come as a teenager. Because teenagers could say, well, you know now, but you don't know what it was to be 10 years old. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I was born here. I was born in the hood. All right? I didn't go to the schools that some of us have the privilege to go to. I know exactly what it is to struggle. I know what it is to be poor. I know what it is to be tempted. At one point, Job could have told God, God, you're God, <coughs> but you don't know what it is to be a human being. And God said, well, you don't know what it is to be God. Jesus says, I know what it is to be God, and I know what it is to be a hu human being. And I overcame. And those who overcome, listen carefully, those who overcome will sit on the throne with me and my father. I don't get that. You tell me a Lucifer who covered God, he covered God and said, yo, I'm going to sit on that throne. I want to be just like God. God's like, you can't, but I want to, but you can't, but I want to. And he starts his war, and he comes down to earth, and he starts telling us, you can be like God, you can be like God, you can be like God. And then we sin, and we crucify Jesus, and he says, if you overcome, you get to sit on the throne that Lucifer wanted to sit to. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. That's the divine love. It makes no sense that after a thousand years, after the new earth is created, that our Heavenly Father will move in with us in the new earth. It makes no sense. 
And if you're telling me today, well, I don't surrender to God because it makes no sense, let me tell you this, I'd rather surrender myself to him and see him face to face and ask him the question. I'll have eternity to study this matter. People say, I just don't understand God. I don't understand creation. I don't understand why he did this. I don't understand why he allowed sin. If you could truly understand God, he wouldn't be that great. If you could truly understand everything God has done, he wouldn't be that great. He wouldn't be that God. If you could do everything I could do, I'm really not better than you in certain aspects. The reason we value people's talents and gifts is usually because it's something we can't do and say, wow, it's amazing. But the moment we reach the level to do it, kids, you know, your parents are perfect. My, my little three-year-old going on four thinks I'm perfect. Okay? She doesn't even know I'm overweight. She thinks I'm perfect. Okay? <laughs> Shh, don't say nothing. But there's going to come a time. Bobby, don't come in with y'all. You're eating a little too much. There's going to come a time. Teenager age, we're like, where's the mom? My mom is old school. When you were three, when you were two, your mom and your dad was everything. Perfect. Spirit of prophecy tells us that parents in our home, we represent God. And many times our youth leave our churches. Many times our youth are completely turned off about God because they say, you represent God, and if God is what you are, I'm out. And if that's happened to anybody here, I'm sorry. But please don't focus on man. Focus on Jesus. If we could understand God completely, he wouldn't be that great. And I'd rather say, you know what, I don't understand a lot of it, but I want to spend the rest of my life in heaven finding him. Is it important to keep the law of God? Yes, it is. Is this law perfect? Yes, it is. Every single one of them, not just the fourth commandment. It's just the only one that people have forgotten. So we have to start off by remember. Is it important to respect? It's very important. Is it important to stop sinning and have victory over sin? A whole different sermon is very important. But first, we must fall in love with Jesus. Many sermons tell us how much he loves us. It's time for us to start saying, how much do we love him? I know he loves me. He gave his life for me, and I've never met him face to face. But now, all I want to say is thank you. Are you living to die? Or are you dying to live? Most of us have been brainwashed, not just by the media, by our parents, by the issues. I was speaking this morning when we were having breakfast. So I was hearing of a lady who had been abused. She had been abused. And I'm hearing this story, and, and her father used to, they were really poor, and they used to all sleep in the same bed. And, and her father used to bring other women while they would just cover the face. Because, you know, they were poor, they're in the same bed. I believe it was the mom and the daughter, too. And he would have relations with those of the woman. That messes up a kid. Do you understand that? And I can't preach on this right now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, but you understand how much Satan has been using sex to destroy us. Do you guys understand that? The issue with our youth is pornography. Do you understand how he's degraded women, degraded men? A gift given to us from God, he has degraded. Before sin, it was a gift, just like the Sabbath. But it's all been degraded. And innocent little kids are growing up thinking they have to be with everybody because all they want is love. Drugs cannot give you love. Music cannot give you love. And sometimes imperfect beings like our parents cannot give us that complete love. I've been married for seven years, and unfortunately I have broken my wife's heart many times not even knowing. We men, we're trying to figure out women, and I know we can't. But we can't live without them. See, Adam had God, and God said, it's not good for you to be alone, but I got you. Yeah, yeah, but a woman's going to give you something. Trust me, Adam. And when he saw that beautiful wife of his, he said, wow. Do you understand that we have been so brainwashed? We have been so destroyed. We have been so being destroyed. He's been trying to destroy the image of God. All I'm saying is this. One, we have to look in the mirror and say, I got to change. But I don't want to. I want you to change me. 
We're living in times that weren't over time. Jesus is about to come. Whether you like it or not, he's about to come. And right now, I have prayed to God at times, Father, just please come. And I realize, but I can't say that because I have family who I love, who I know have not given their life to you. And if you were to come, it would be selfish in my behalf because I would never see them again. If I have to suffer a little bit more, if I got to go to San Jose just a little longer and leave my wife and leave our children at home just to let the people know that you're about to come and how we need to surrender to you, Father, I'll do it. Whatever it takes. Because you gave your life. Youth. You guys are not the next generation. You guys are possibly the generation. Our leaders will be inspired to see you guys stand up and preach the word of God. Ladies. Men say, well, who's this Jesus guy I got to talk to before I come to you? Our parents gave us advice the best that they can. And it's beautiful advice. But what Jesus wants to give you is bigger, is bigger and better than that. I've seen a lot of ladies just get so wrapped up in these young men and, and they get destroyed. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. But we serve one who is. Our priority should be first a relationship with Jesus. School is good, work is good, relationship is good. But if you don't have Jesus, if you're not hanging on to Jesus, like Peter started walking in the water, turned around, started to drown because he stopped focusing on Jesus. Turn your eyes upon him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. I want to make a calling. And I don't want you to come up here just for emotional reasons. You understand? I don't want your emotions to be the only reason you come up here. Logically ask yourself this. Am I just living to die or do I need to die to truly live? I don't know about tomorrow. You might leave here and say, but I'm going to continue the same lifestyle. I got plans to go to the club tonight. Honestly, I'm talking about this second. Salvation is now. And if you say, but I've been a Christian my whole life, I'm asking you this. Have you surrendered completely to him? Completely to him. If you say, I need to die to live again, I ask you to please come up here. Please come up here Amen. and make a stance. Amen. Son, Father, I... I need to die to live again. I'm not a pastor. I'm not trying to baptize nobody. But if someone hasn't been baptized, and said, look, you're telling me I got to be born again? Yeah, you got to be born again. I ask you to come up here. We'll arrange something. Because salvation is not tomorrow. Salvation was yesterday. But his mercy has allowed today. Men, when are we going to step up and be better husbands? Better fathers. I'm 29 years old. And for the first time last October, my father called me to tell me happy birthday. I forgave him. But I've been hurt. And I know he's been hurt. And there's many of you guys who've been hurt. But I thank God that I suffered because I never want my little girl to go through it. And if it took me to go through that, to be a good father. Not just a good father. A father who's going to focus on Jesus and raise my little girl the best that I can. I don't know what she's going to be 15 years from now. But all I know is that this second, my life is in his hands. And we need better men in this world. Because women have been doing the job. Because men are not stepping up. Oh, women are being independent. Well, men are not doing it. Well, women think they can do everything. Men are not doing it. Where we at? We're out there sleeping around. We're out there addicted to things. We're out there letting the world control us because we're too stubborn. We're too much of a man. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of guys in the world. There's not a lot of men. It's time to step up. And ladies, 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 I can't tell you so much. I have a little girl. I can only tell you as a father of a three-year-old, you guys have to be so wrapped up in Jesus, so lost up in Jesus, so found in Jesus. That guys got to go first to them. Yeah, I see a lot of beautiful girls here. People got to go first to Jesus before they can come to you. Don't let your emotions say, but, but he just makes me feel good. It's not about feelings. It's bigger than that. I want to die to live. And I want the transformation from within 
not just from without, not just the haircut, not just the nice clothes, from within. Do you guys want to die and live again? Let's begin today. I want to have a word of prayer, and if you guys want to continue coming up here, I would like for all of us to kneel down, and please understand one thing. This is not just church service. When I pray for the holy angels to protect this building, trust and believe the presence of God is here. And the only reason I'm standing here is because of his mercy and his grace. Because if he so peaked just a little bit, we would all die. But his mercy and his grace says, well, there's two and three, I am there. You've called, I'm here. And I know that he's here. And I believe that he's here. But I want to make sure that when you leave, you continue holding on to Jesus. Let us pray. Amoroso Padre, loving Father, gracias, Señor. Thank you, Father. See, Lord, we, we, we just talk to you in prayer like it's tr just traditional, Lord. But we are speaking to the King of kings. Lord, you have allowed us, as unworthy as we are, but through the blood of Jesus, you have made us worthy, Father, to come to you. We can't thank you enough. There's nothing I could do, Lord, to, to change your feelings for me because you love me regardless of what I am and who I am. But Father, because I want to see you face to face, because I want to hug you and I just want to thank you, I ask you that you begin transforming me, Lord. And every single person that came up here, you know the hearts, start transforming us within. We've been told that we're ugly. We've been told that we're not worth anything. We've been told by TV that we are this, that we are dad, that we're unstoppable, that we are God. Father, we need to understand that without you, Lord, we are absolutely nothing. How much are we worth? How much are we worth? We're worth the death of Jesus. Jesus carried our sins, Father. But death could not hold him because his love is much stronger. His love is much greater than death. And he resurrected again. Glory to God. Glory to you, Father. But I ask you, Lord, that this moment in this church, you touch us and you transform us and you begin doing a work within. Is it going to be easy, Father? No. But it's worth it. How much? It's worth eternal life. Every young girl here, Father, you know their struggles. You know what they've done. And I ask you that in the name of Jesus, if they request it in their heart, that you forgive them. And let them know that you love them. And that they could start a relationship with you. For the young guys, Father, make them men. Men of God. For everyone else, Father, for People who are older than us and are wiser than us, I know they struggle too. Let the men stand up in their home. Not a macho man, a man of God. Let the woman stand up and be a woman of God. If there's been pain one another, let the kids ask for forgiveness. Let the father and mother ask for forgiveness. Let us start a reformation and a revival, not just in this church, but in the city of San Jose in the state of San Francisco, and the state of California. Let there be the light that shines to the whole world. Give us strength. Continue loving us. And give us a desire to find you attractive and love you. We ask you all this, Father, in the most precious name, in Jesus' name. Amen.